All right. Good morning. Well, we're definitely getting some chill hours in for our fruit plants down here in Louisiana. Hello. Let's see how the little ones are doing. Oh, they all okay. Good. I had to put a heat lamp like this because uh, I don't have them in there. And that brooder, they I'll kind of I'll grew the brooder. They were jumping up and they hit the the bulb in the uh, the heat lamp and they broke it. So I, I got to put them in there for right now. Uh, uh, I guess one of the things I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to make a a, a brooder for the chickens because um, that brooder was made for the quail specifically and it don't need to be uh, any bigger than that. <coughs> Or I can redo all that right there and make me a bigger brooder. And the incubator too, I can make bigger where I can get more eggs in it. Because right now I can only get one tray of eggs in it. Okay, so what I'm going to do this morning, I'm going to feed the chickens and, and, and uh, I'm going to collect some comfrey. Because I'm going to make a comfrey salve today. And uh, I'll take you along with me and show you how I'm going to do that. But here's my country, country, comfrey salve batch right here. You guys, it's it's growing crazy here. It's beautiful. And that's what it, that's what comfrey looks like. It's a big... they big leaves with all these veins in it. And uh, also, uh, it's kind of fuzzy. A little fuzzy. So anyway, I'm gonna cut me a bunch of this, and uh, we're gonna make we're gonna make some uh, salve today. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it. Um, there's two parts. You can you make the oil, the infused oil, and you can stop there, and, and you can use that. Uh, but then you can go a little further and mix some beeswax in it, and uh, make a salve with it. And that's that's what I'm that's uh, uh, the road I'm gonna choose to go with. It. I want to make a salve, and uh, I don't know if it lasts longer as a salve or not. I don't know what lasts longer, but I think all together, this stuff's probably good for about six months to a year. Probably closer to six months. I'm not really sure. But just like anything natural, you know, it doesn't last, you know, forever. trying to pick some of the more greener ones that don't have a little yellowish to it or a little damage from something eating it. There's plenty here. Plenty. Plus I can make a tea. It's a, a fertilizer tea for your plants. And then I could just, and I do from time to time, just take some of this and throw it into the chickens. They they eat it. I would assume this is very good for them since it's very good for us. Not to consume, but and you know what? That too is debatable.
I would think this is more than enough. I'm just making a little uh, 32 ounce mason jar full. And then I'll take I'll be taking that and dividing it into uh, <clears throat> some little smaller jars when I uh, mix the wax <clears throat> to make the salve. Okay, I'm gonna go feed the chickens, and I'll meet you in the kitchen. Okay. Okay, we're in the kitchen. I'm by the sink. Kind of being a little quiet. The kids are still sleeping. We got grandkids over. Sleeping on the pouch and stuff. So I want to go ahead and get the comfrey washed. I'm going to get it washed and then I'm going to set it out on a towel and I'm going to dry it off and I'm going to let it sit for a little while and make sure it dries out good. Uh, you, don't want to, you don't want to have water in it when you uh, start making the oil. And so uh, that's, that's going to be the step here. And when I get to, uh, uh, after it's dry, I'm going to show you guys the process to make the oil, okay? All right, I'll keep you updated. Okay, guys, still in the kitchen. Still letting it dry. Let me show you. Got it laid out. And I've just been kind of going around and kind of pat drying it with paper towels. It's pretty close to being dry. I'm gonna let it sit a little longer. Something I find that was pretty good is that I happened to do this on a day that's cold outside. So we have the heater on in the house and it's helping it dry. Uh, nice, actually, pretty nice. Still staying green, fiber and like green. And um, so I'm gonna just let this sit out probably another hour. Let it dry really good and then we'll we'll get to start making the uh, infused oil, okay? Okay guys. Um, been letting the uh, comfrey dry out and um, you wanna just let it dry out till it starts to wilt. So it's it's all dried out. It's been sitting here for about four hours and we got the heater on in the house and um, it's dry it's just starting to wilt so I know some people take and they they dry it where it gets real crispy you really don't uh, need to do that from all the research I've been uh, looking up you know um, I'm not no expert you guys but I'm I'm just looking up information on it and um, this is how, um, how I, find, I found to do it. So what I'm doing, I'm taking it all and I'm just putting it all together in the towel that I had laying here, okay? And then you wanna kinda uh, fold it up in the towel like this, roll it up, because what we're gonna do is we wanna, we wanna break it up so that the, um, all the veins in it kinda get broken so that it can release the oils. One way to do it is just kind of bend it over the edge of the table like this. You can hear it cracking. Loses it up, it breaks all the little little veins. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do after this is now we're gonna go ahead and stuff it inside of a mason jar, fill it up, stuff it in there. And I'll probably get all this in there. I mean, I don't know, we'll see.
Yep, I'm gonna get all this in here. Voila! <laughs> Okay, now that we have this filled, and hang on a second, now we're going to pull it up. Olive oil. I'm just using some olive oil, regular olive oil, and we're going to go ahead and fill this up with olive oil. See all the bubbles coming up because it's all going it's all going down, all the air is coming out. It's filling up. And we're going to go ahead and um, put the top on nice and tight. we really got an old date on here. All right, guys. So, all right, so this is where we at now. We got all the comfrey stuffed in. This is a 32 ounce uh, mason jar, and I got it stuffed and filled up with olive oil. Now, the next step we're gonna do is we got we got to fuse the oil and the uh, comfrey together. So the way we're gonna do that is I'm gonna use a crock pot because you got to put it on a really really low heat and um, because you, you don't want to, if you use too high of a heat, you're going to kill all the nutrients in the, in the comfrey, and we don't want to do that. Okay, now, I don't want to place my, um, my jaw right on the uh, bottom of this pot, just like when you're, you're canning and you're doing uh, water canning, you don't put this on the bottom, you usually have a little basket that it's in. Well, since I don't have the basket, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some uh, rings in here. So hang on, let me get them. So a lot of canning rings. I'm just going to line the whole bottom up with canning rings. you see down in here and um, so I'm just lining it the bottom with with the rings and we'll put some water in here and begin to uh, heat heat up the water so I'm not gonna put the I should have been having the water heat up already um, I'm a little behind on that but anyway other than that Other than that, it's not going to hurt anything.
Okay, so right, right now I'm going to put it on high just so that the water get warmed up quicker. And when it gets when it gets warmed up or hot, I can feel it's warming up already. We're gonna we'll put the, the jar in there. Well actually I can put the jar in now. And we can um, just let that sit probably for a good while. You know, the longer the better, probably minimum five hours. So it's like 12.06 right now. So like five, six o'clock tonight. This will be this will be ready to take out. And and I could leave it go. A lot of people do this and put it in before they go to bed and let it sit all night and then they get up in the morning and they go ahead and make the salve because the next step after this is to melt down the, the beeswax and to uh, to make our, our salve so um, so that'll be the next step after after this but we wanna this is how you infuse your comfrey and your olive oil it's a very very low heat for a long period of time and um, so um, so uh, we'll meet back here in about six hours um, to go ahead and make start making the salve. Okay. All right. See you in about six hours. Okay, guys. It's the uh, the oil's been fusing in the crock pot now for about almost ten hours, and uh, so we're gonna go ahead and and um, strain it, and we're gonna start making uh, the salve. But I wanted to show you. I went ahead and uh, did like this. I put some water down here and um, have this on top. And this is where I got about two ounces of, of um, beeswax in there. And I'm using that uh, beeswax to make the salve. It, uh, beeswax comes in a thing like this and this brick block here, a yellow block. I have. Uh, and I just sealed it back up and then I got some containers here that I'm going to be putting them in these uh, these metal ones and I have some small tins real small tins here those small ones and I have these which are a little, little bigger I have these This size here. So I have that, which I think these are two ounces. And this is, uh, I don't know if it says it on here, I think this is like a half an ounce. Half an ounce. So I'm going to make these two different sizes. Okay, so that's what I have. And um, so we're going to get this butter, not butter, get the, the wax to start melting. It'll heat up. I'm using steam because I don't want to take a chance on uh, be, be, it being too hot and uh, burning anything. So, so right now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and get this set up so you can see here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and strain this. Now see this, this has been in here all day, and it's not too hot where it would burn you, but it's been in this heat all day.
And so now we're going to go ahead and pour it through here. I wish I had a smaller pot to do this, but I don't right now. I'm going to get myself set up for this a little better than this. Just so you can see in here, whoa, you can see the color of the Color, see the color, the green color. It looks looks right. Looks like all the pictures I've seen. All right. So now let this sit a little longer. I'll wait till the, till the uh, beeswax is fully melted and we'll pour this in. Now I know some people use a cheesecloth. Um, I didn't. And if, if you're going to dry it up first all the way and crush it up, you're going to have to do that. This is this this was just big leaves. So let me let you see uh, here, beeswax is starting to melt and I'm using steam, I'm not using it right, direct fire on it, we don't want to burn it, we don't want it sticking to the bottom of the pot. I'm going to go ahead and pour this in here now. Okay, so we have the honey, some of the honey started, uh, I guess, hardening up after I poured that juice in there, but we're going to let this heat up some more. say I'm going to cover this, but you know what, I, I shouldn't, because what will happen, I'll get water condensating on the top and dripping in here, and I don't want that. Let me see if I can break up this little piece of wax here to help it dissolve or melt. 
it's almost all melted. Look at that. It's very beautiful looking. Real good green. Found a good way to do this. All right, guys. Well, I'm cleaning up now. Um, I'm going to show you what I made, and it's dry. It's, it's drying actually. It's looking pretty nice. Um, right here, here it is. Here, right there. Ain't that beautiful? So I was able to get ten of the one ounce, one ounces, and then uh, two of these little half ounce or whatever. Not even a. It's less than a half ounce, probably a quarter of an ounce or an eighth of an ounce. But anyway, there they are right there. I'm going to let them sit and cool all the way. Um, I'm not even going to touch them till probably tomorrow morning. I'm going to just let them sit out before I cover them and everything. So I'm um, cleaning up the kitchen. That was uh, that was how I did it. Now, uh, it was a little tricky getting it out of the pot into those little containers so I need to work on a, a better system better way maybe get buy me some pots uh, just for doing this uh, because I got ideas of not just fusing comfrey but I you know I got a moringa tree and I can 
fuse uh, a lot of other herbs that I'm growing and make different uh, different things that'll help um, for medicinal pur purposes uh, and use it as a salve, you know, and, and, and even just oils, you know, that you can maybe um, take under your tongue, add it in your whatever, however they use oils, you know. Um, so so this kind of is opening up some things for me doing this. This is pretty good. First time I've done something like this. Um, definitely, though, need to seek a way to uh, transfer from the hot pot to the containers. Uh, definitely need to figure out a way to do that easier. Um, I, I was able to do it. It was just a slow process, and maybe that's the process. You know, maybe that's how you really do it. I don't know. Um, Maybe I need a different type of spoon to get in there or whatever it might be. I just need to kind of start looking around and maybe figure out something that will make that part easier for me. And um, and maybe for you too if you try this. So anyway, okay guys, that's it. That's uh, Kerry doing, making some country salve. One more shot right there. There you go. And um, oh, one other thing I, I, I know too. Definitely have to strain it through a cheesecloth. Now, all of this is pretty, pretty pure. There's no extra impurities or anything um, in it. But uh, there was some left at the bottom. I could have probably made another big one, and um, maybe two more big ones. May yeah, maybe two more big ones I could have made out of what I had to get rid of because it was they had particles down at the bottom that should have been strained out and maybe I should have restrained it but I didn't have anything to use like I didn't have no cheesecloth and that's something I'm gonna have to invest in and get some of that around here and have that handy uh, for straining purposes just to strain it by itself did great but there was still things that got through caused me to not maybe make about two more of those bigger ones I would I would think so and that's okay I mean I'm just learning and um, so there you have it comfort yourself uh, there it is in the kitchen right there. See you guys in the next video. Y'all be blessed. Okay. Bye.